Mom, today sucked, I'm not feeling great. People all laughed and they called me names. Why's it so tough and the world so lame? Can I have some cash and a ride down to the arcade? Hello, hello everybody. Happy weekend. Hope you are all doing well. Welcome to another Let's Play in PSVR 2. And uh, I am so, so excited for this stream because firstly, this was a game that I've been waiting months to be able to play because Brian Paul and the rest of the PSVR without Pro community who have quests were telling me all about this game and it was finally here. Uh, and thanks to um, Mighty Coconut, the devs, for giving me a key for this game. Uh, I am in love and hopefully by the end of this stream you will know why. Um, I hope that you're all doing well in the chat and that the sound levels are right. Um, this is going to be really good fun. And then um, basically I'm going to be playing 18 holes with a fellow dev who is with me who I will be introducing you to in just a few seconds. Um, and then I'll be opening up the lobby for any of you out there that have this game and want to do some putting with me. Uh, for another round so um, yeah get your headsets on standby um, so without further ado I'm putting on my headset now and I am joined by Edward Edward how you doing very good thanks for having me on board this is amazing you are in Australia are you in Melbourne is that right yeah I'm about as low as you can go. As, as low as you can go. Yeah. I uh, I haven't been to Australia <laughs> in about 20 years. Um, my, my, my late uncle lived in Brisbane. Um, and that took long enough to get to. And that's on the, the northern side, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're about halfway there in terms of a global trip. It's a big country. Yeah, it is. I can't believe how many hours it was just to get off the coast again when flying back. Um, so what time is it where you are right now? It's just after 6 a.m.? Yeah, it's just uh, just gone six. It's amazing. So I, I really appreciate you getting up nice and early on uh, on a Monday morning for you uh, to do this. And uh, yeah, the, the chat's incredibly grateful. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to just chatting all about this and having a, a nice nice round of mini golf. Yeah, should be good. Should be good. I'm gonna try and bring my A game, but I'm gonna blame <laughs> the time if I'm not. This is a yeah. This is first, and and I always like to say that um, you know winning a first match is, is always boring. That's what I always say when I play Fortnite. Whenever we go into a match and we lose, <laughs> I go yeah, but you don't want to win the first one. That's boring. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll go for, we'll aim for a tie. Um, lots and lots of um, of of um, courses to play. Um, for anyone that buys the game, the base game is eight courses. And then on top of that, there are 10 that are available on DLC. And for about $30, you get access to all of them. And for anyone that's looking at this menu right now, you'll notice that there are actually two uh, rows. And the reason why is for every course, there is then a bonus, uh, like hard course that you can get, which... Um, tell me a bit about that. What is the difference between regular courses and hard? That they're the same environment, but they've just been remixed? Yeah, so they're mostly the same. We tend to do, we, we often try and put a little bit of something extra in. So it might be the same world in two different states. Often it's just daytime, nighttime, but it might be like, oh, they were setting up for an event during the day. It's the event at night. And when we design a course, it's so often that we go, oh, no, no this hole's easy. And then we play it and it's impossibly hard. <laughs> and we're like, and that hole goes to the hard course. <laughs> right. That's interesting. Um, so that that's it. So f you know you can get up to eighteen courses. Well, technically there are thirty-six. I know you wouldn't say that because they're technically remixes, but they are thirty-six different course experiences, aren't they? Um, yeah. And what's the plan? You're just going to keep making courses because I mean, if I go to the final part of the menu, and I know you're not going to be able to reveal anything, we've got all these, we've got these these two coming soon. But I assume that as a team. Are you just constantly coming up with new ideas and the idea is that, you know, the sky's the limit, really? Yeah, we have approximately a couple thousand ideas. We've got this one big mural and every time there's a good idea, we put it there. 
And so assuming people keep enjoying the game, we could go until, like, we're, I'm going to retire on this game, basically. <laughs> I'm going to be, you know, 90-something years old going, Oh, darling, I've got to get up and do some more mini-golf today. Like, I'm just, we're here for the long haul as long as people keep enjoying it. That's amazing. And finally, before we go, and the, 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 uh, the map we've decided to play is one that I've not done yet, which is uh, Shangri-La. Um, t tell us a bit about this map. Um, what's the theme? What, where, uh, what inspired it? So this is part of our uh, lost cities where we have uh, mythical or, you know, uh, historical cities that, you know, can't go to anymore for whatever reason. And obviously, uh, during their heyday, they were all mini golf courses. Uh, that, that small fact is lost to time, but, uh, you know, little known secret, they and Shangri-La was uh, from a, a really, really old British novel, I believe. And it was this uh, mythical city atop the mountains. And it was sort of this heavenly perfect city. And people didn't age or suffer. And there was a really terrible film made about it. <laughs> uh, but it was just, we would just sort of a Tibetan city inspired at the top of a mountain range we thought and that just sounds beautiful and wonderful so we it it was one of our courses where we wanted to make just being there really chill and comfortable generally we either go for a course being really kitschy and a lot of fun so lots of silly things to do like the candy level it's just like well this is just a bit of wish fulfillment everyone wants to be around giant Andy, <laughs> or we want it to be really chill and comfortable where you're just like I could just zone here for hours and it's definitely a more chill level and it's really nice that's awesome well I think we should just jump straight into it so where we are at the moment is we're in this sort of starting lobby where there is a practice green down here and then there's a driving range up there um, which is difficult but a lot of fun I've just got the trophy actually for hitting all the targets um, but I know that there are many more difficult trophies yet. Um, but yeah, I'll just fire this up and uh, away we go. The sound level's all right, chat. Hopefully it's good. By the way, if anyone in the chat has any questions for Edward, um, put a Q at the beginning, then a period, full stop, and then your question. And uh, Karina, if you're able to collate the questions or, or someone that would be amazing if not I can do a search at the end they say the sound is great so I'm happy now firstly just looking around um, there are so many things I love about this game and one of them is the sense of scale and the fact that you know you could have just focused on the courses and then had some kind of border background but like you really do feel like you are somewhere and you know there are the ones that are a bit more fun and, and spunky in in their aesthetic and but a lot of them are just so chill and i feel like i'd come here just to get a bit more mindful i would move here <laughs> if amazon could still deliver like next day I, i'd be here in a heartbeat well when they get their drones sorted uh yeah, I'm, I'm sure that will be a possibility right so now i've just got to build it yeah so this is nice. There's, so there's a bit of a walk to the first one. Yeah, we, we like to sometimes have a bit of an opening sort of area just to really get people into the spirit of, you know, get that first reveal, that first sort of camera shot, I guess. I like that. And, you know, you say the first reveal, something else I find great about a lot of these levels is, you know, you see the beginning of the level, but as you go around the course, you then go to new views and you're like, wow, we've still got this half of the course to do. Um, and it can be quite remarkable. So uh, is it me first? I believe so with my little skull. It's you. Uh, my little skull. Uh, so this has just got a little bump. Nice and easy, I'm sure. Nothing's going to catch me out. Uh down the middle or I could bounce it around the side right um, having not done fun fact about that skull ball yeah uh, the texture the image is my skull I got an MRI a while ago took the 3d data of the skull and projected it onto the ball for the texture so you're telling so you're me knocking around my head I am there. bashing in Edward's skull on this course of mindfulness it's gonna be 
that's gonna be really satisfying. If I start to win, you can be like, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be hitting it. <laughs> right, here we go. Let's hope your skull serves me well. Okay, that's okay. So this is a par two, so I've, I'm, I'm on track at the moment. Oh, you're doing the same. There we go. Okey dokey. Now, most people, when you play miniature golf normally, people always get annoyed. So, like, if the ball was actually here, you'd be like, oh, how do I fit it in? But simple mechanic. You can just go through the walls. And also, I notice, you know, the, the club constantly changes length based on where you're holding it. So, you're never going to swing it and miss it. It's, um, I think it's a really good compromise to, um, you know, having a, a fair but fun experience that's not too... Uh, brutal on the things that are going to make people go, ah, oh, I thought I hit that, you know? Yeah, it's it's weird uh, breaking, uh, effectively breaking mini golf to make sure that everything else is out of the way of the mini golf. Yes. We want it to just be, oh, it's just, just you playing the game, but otherwise, it, it's weird, but then you go into real world mini golf and I'm like, why is this so heavy? Why can't I swing through the ground? I get really, uh, I've been ruined, basically. Yeah. And also, like, if this was a real miniature golf course, health and safety would be having a few words. Some of the cliff edges you're on when you're going for that putt. <laughs> I believe in the Star Wars style of putting railings on things, in that there should never be railings on things. I like that. I've just noticed here, um, there is a bull. So, um... On, I remember when I first played this game, um, I thought it was one per course, but no, every single hole uh, on every course has a ball hidden somewhere, and when you collect it, you then unlock that cosmetics you would have seen on the lobby. I had all those balls in front of me. Those are the ones that I've collected so far. I have to say, collectibles, I'm all for in games, but my goodness, it's such a fun part of this game, especially when you're playing with lots of people. It gives you something to do in the meantime while you're waiting for your turn. Yeah, we. It's it's ridiculous how one of those little ideas is as fun as finding things. It turns out uh, Banjo Kazooie was the best game ever made, and we're all <laughs> still, you know, in their shadow. Right. I love that reference. Right. Next one. Let's have a look here. Now. guess I want to hit it so it diagonal there so along right I'm going to do this and hopefully not regret it wow the the um, friction I was wondering if there was going to be a lot of friction on that and there is indeed right. that's, a, that's a trick shot right there yep. it doesn't help in any way no but it looked good but, uh, yeah I tricked myself basically <laughs> I liked it. It, lo it looked. Oh, okay. What one's this? this? Is a par three? Okay. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Look at that! I'll never recreate that, but it was a good moment. Yeah, I apologise. Um, I, I I know I might have scared um the bejeebus out of you uh, with my promo for this live show with that trick shot I did. You know. The reality is, <laughs> you play hundreds of holes. The one that you get in by fluke, you just need to make a highlight reel of all those one in a thousand, and then you're like, look at me. Um. <laughs> we all, uh, in the office, I mean, I say the office, we all work distance, but in our own offices, we all play this game so much, and half of us are still objectively terrible <laughs> at it. I can imagine uh, there's a point where you actually start getting worse. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Me and some of the other models. Oh, what a hit. Oh, oh unlucky. That was so uh, close. So close. Oh, uh, I didn't get the ball in that last one. Some of the other models are effectively should. used to test to make sure that we're not making the game too hard. It's like, oh, if Edward can play this, it's probably good for the average punter. Right. Just having a quick look for the secret ball. And I appreciate that you're not... Oh, there it is. Ta -da!
No, to the right. You know, the sign of a good mini golf game is great tactile response, good feeling, and what was the development process like of getting just like the most important part of a miniature golf game, which is making it feel right? Because like that just then, as soon as you hit it, the moment you hit it, you know if you've done it right or not because you feel it. Um, and if you don't get that right, then the rest of the game's not going to come together. Is is, is that something that you're, you still optimise over time or was it just something that you just spent, you know? At this at this point, it's locked. We do not want to change course, the physics. Of course, people are used to it. So many people really love the game. We don't want to effectively make ruin the game for the people who love it the most and put in the most time. That would would be cruel and unusual. Yes. Um, so what was the optimization process like to begin with? A lot of playing mini golf. Right. A lot of real life mini golf. Looking at the physics and then realizing that because we're doing one simulation at a time with one ball it sort of a sphere is the easiest thing to do physics on because it's a single point in a fixed radius and just sampling that thousands and thousands of times a second so even if say if you were playing on a computer and the computer was running on a potato and getting sort of four frames a second the physics are still going to be perfect it's not tied to the rendering it's just ridiculously fast to make sure that everything goes correctly and feels right right yeah that, that felt right <laughs> <laughs> gonna try and go over there. I don't really want to sort of say out loud what my intentions are because I know that I'm definitely not going to do it. The thing about golf is you just keep it to yourself, you hit it, and then you say, that was kind of what I was going to do. But no, live chat, I'm going for that right side bit and I'm probably going to miss it. Yeah. <laughs> that was spectacular. Well, actually, when I point over here, I meant I was pointing at this block. There you go. Oh, you're in... Oh, just yeah, outside. Ah, oh, copycat, hang out with me. <laughs> One of my favourite views of this level is right here. If you look over the edge, you feel really sick. Oh, wow. And if you do this, I can go and check it out. <laughs> Bye. Wow. <laughs> Couple of features I love about the game. One, I always press the wrong button, but I think this is the replay one. No, it's not. Uh, there we go. If you want to see your last shot because you made a mistake, you want to see how or show someone, you just press this button. Or, of course, if you take a shot, that's a great one. I just love this ability. I think that's... Uh, a really really nice touch was that something that's been in the game since the beginning or was it a requested feature it was uh the game was very very basic at launch it has changed a lot just mostly you know polishing making it run a bit better and putting in things that we always wanted to put in but didn't have the resources initially okay uh i know at one point i think we have to give up on it because we just couldn't make it run on everything was the idea that when you finished a game, you could look down and see every shot that you took in the game Again. being taken by many versions of you, but couldn't make it work. Especially if you, because you know it's it says when it's like this is your best score for this hole, you know, um, it'd be great to have you know the replay so you could like play a ghost version of yourself. I mean, but as you say, the resources required of to make that happen i mean i'm not a developer so it's it's all alchemy to me but i can imagine that would be just way, way too resourceful especially when there are other things that you could allocate those resources to right yeah well one look what the funniest part about game development is talking to sort of the tech guys the coders who make things happen and saying oh could we do this and you'll never be sure 
what's impossible. You could be like, oh, could we sit... And this is true for all games. You'd be like, can the character sit down here? And they go, no, that's impossible. That would break the game. And you go, what if everything in the world could be constructed out of individual objects and you could reconstruct those on the fly? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you never know what's going to be easy right. and hard until you ask them. Yeah. Oh, there's a secret boulder. Got to look for a few of them. Let me have a quick look back here. Actually, I don't know if... If you're not sure which ones you have, uh, you can go into giant mode and they'll have the yes. ticks under... The ticks, isn't it? Yeah. Whole number. That was the one I pressed accidentally first. Let me show you the chat this. So, here, you get the schools and yeah, as Edward was saying, the lost bull. This is how many... Where have you got the lost bulls? Here are our schools. Whole numbers and then the par. And there you go. Um, and there's... Hello up there. And yeah, he, <laughs> there he is. I can come towards him and... Uh, should we actually? Ah. We'll swap positions now, actually. So if he if he goes to the menu, there you go. Big big head in the sky. I love it. <laughs> and a tiny tiny. Pattern. Yeah, I didn't notice that before. That's uh... <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Right. Okay, it's uh. Oh, now if you miss that, I assume it can still go down. Yeah. Oh wow, that's wow. that worked out really. Yeah, really well. that almost went in still. I just learned yesterday from uh, some game cats were telling me that if the ball goes out of play, if you hold the grip button, it doesn't make it despawn. Because um, I was playing with a friend who was as new to it as I was. And he had one where it was actually bouncing back, and then it, it obviously despawned. And I thought, oh, that should last longer. But yeah, if you grip it, um, is that something that's expressed anywhere in the game, or is I don't know? That'd be a good thing. It should be in a menu somewhere, yeah. I believe. But it's it's one of those small hidden things yes. because you want it to last longer, but then it ruins the flow of the game. Yeah. do it. No, it missed it. Oh! Oh, what? That, oh, no. that teased me. It missed it, then it was going, oh, am I going to go in there? <laughs> nice. Let's see, that's when you'd want to do a replay, so I'll do a oh, quick right. replay now. To, um... Is it going to let me? There we go. Look at that. So it miss. And you can see the look of disappointment on my face. <laughs> The amount of expressions you can get out of these faces is pretty impressive. Um, I love it. <laughs> oh, the tension there. Oh. So what? So what is your um, what is your role in um, Mighty Coconut? So I am the lead modeler. So. Me and the other modelers, we get uh, effectively given a block out of the level where you know, everything's all grey boxes, but we've mostly figured out the gameplay, and we make it pretty. Okay. So, um, for example, this level, uh, one of the reasons earlier on I suggested it purely selfishly, it's one of mine. <laughs> uh, so, uh, apart from a few pieces here and there, all that you see before you was handmade on a computer. And is it designed on a computer or do you actually design it in VR? So, a bit of both. Uh, the When we first start locking out a level, trying to see how it'll feel, how it'll go together, uh, we obviously do sketches, lots of ideas, but then we do as much of it as we can in VR to make it feel right. Uh, coming, you know, when you do other games design, all the rules that work for different games just don't work in VR. Right. Same as if I was designing a 2D side scroller versus a first person shooter, completely different rules as to what will work in one or the other. VR's the same. The problem is you can only see what will work in VR. So we try and do as much, even if we're just doing three you know, sort of sketches effectively in VR, which is a fun thing you can do because you can stand there and go, oh, does that feel right? Does that not work? And then 
will take it into a computer and do the optimized, the final, the good looking one, but we try and do as much as we can in VR. Gotcha. And there's always a stage at the end where we've got a couple extra props and things like rocks and plants where we do it in VR where we just sl we pre modeled those and we slap them around and go, oh how does this feel? Yeah. Does this feel nice? Is this too much of a muchness? Gotcha. I got a really specific question to ask you now, which no one would not no one would expect this coming. So we've got down here this um nice little bit of bunting flapping in the wind. Now it looks like you've just, you know, put the rope down and the wind is making it blow, but obviously that's not how this level is designed. So you had to animate to give it the aesthetic of flapping in the wind, right? That is just, you've you've directed, or like, just sort of describe that to me. I, I mean, I'm assuming I've got that right. You haven't actually got wind physics happening there. You've just had to create the illusion of wind. Well, we've created a fake wind system, so... It's not animated in the way that you animate a character because unless we're being very, very careful, things like the Pico on the quest, they can't they don't have the processing power to run that. Right. So what we do is we have uh, a, what's called a vertex offset shader. So in a 3D model, all the points are vertices, and you can say in a shader, hey, actually push those to the side a bit depending what we want and then we just have waves and textures to create our wind okay affecting it differently uh so if we would we don't have physics on these but if we did it would be a completely rock still one in the middle it just looks like it's moving back and forwards and we there's a level called Kyoto valley where we created a whole wind system and it can affect the balls and it will affect everything and so we had to build this system right to make everything and so you can see as well it affects all the plants oh i see yeah yes and how much it affects something you know it'll affect it more at the end and how much it'll wave depending on the thickness of the material we had to build all that from scratch okay Wow. Oh, man, I love this. This is so great, being able to just ask you such specific questions that I'm sure if I search <laughs> that on Google, I'm not going to get an answer. So, uh, no, that's amazing. Right, this one looks... Uh, I assume it counts as just outbound if it goes in the uh, sand. Oh, no, no, you would actually have to get it back up the ramp. No, it's so much worse. Oh, you that'd be terrible. Yeah, the sand, the friction on it yep. is... It, yeah, remarkable. So our characters, they blink. Um, I'm assuming it's just random blinking, but I could also imagine that it uses the eye tracking system. Um, either way, it's very convincing. Is it just a random blinking animation, or is it actually using the PlayStation Eye? It's just a random blinking. Okay. Unless one of the uh, tech guys went rogue and put it in for <laughs> right. PlayStation 1, currently it's just random. Well, that's amazing, because I mean, but... it's, it's so convincing. <laughs> But with more and more headsets getting eye tracking and face tracking, we uh, might be able to switch that in the future. But currently, uh, because we still have to try and... We wanted to make it the same game on everything. Yes, of uh, course. But running as best as possible. So the PlayStation, because of the OLED screen, the colors pop a bit more. Uh, we can get rid of some of our optimizations. So on the Quest, if you're far away from an object, we'll we'll swap it out with one that has less quality, has you know is easier to render. Right. But with the PlayStation, we don't have to do that as much. So it's the same game, but better effectively. Gotcha. Sorry, I was just looking for this the secret bull while you were speaking. Now you gotta. I just I don't know where this one is. When when you were deciding where to place the balls, was the general rule that it's got to be somewhere that you don't have to fly to, or is that not necessarily true? Yeah, so when hiding the balls, the rule of thumb is that 
you have to be able to get it without flying, and you have to be able to get it while sitting in a seat. Oh, wow, okay. Because uh, a lot of... Uh, I mean, a lot of people who use VR might be wheelchair-bound, yep. or might not be able to stand up for long periods, and we just want to make sure that you know it's still accessible and fun for everyone. Wow, well... This one has me stumped, I have to admit. So it must be out here, actually, yeah, if we're going back again. <laughs> there it is. I'm trying to remember where we put it. It's just oh, here. There it is. Well done. Oh, man. That's a nice looking one. <laughs> and yeah, once you find it, um, it leaves a little um, halo, uh, sort of a outline, so that when you're playing with other people and you want to help your friends, um, you can see it that way but I like it because even the most trickiest balls to find you know they might some of them you know I've spent a th good three to five minutes but they're not like forever you, you do eventually find them um, so uh, was that a have you played the mist level yet? I haven't is that gonna be really bad <laughs> yeah so uh, often I hide the balls and then someone comes in and says that's too cruel and pulls right. it back um, but because Mist was famous for being really fiddly and difficult um, oh. I effectively oh my goodness well done Ooh. I effectively had permission with the Mist level to be as cruel as I wanted and lordy lordy I was you were very close that's amazing well, I will, I will, I will have you in mind when I'm swearing at bushes and trees, trying to find it. <laughs> oh, here's one. Please do. Yeah, please do. <laughs> How's everyone in the chat doing? I'm just having a look. Oh, everyone said nice shot. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, just a reminder, anyone in the chat, um, just put a Q at the beginning of your comment and then your question if you have anything you'd like me to ask Edward um, I'll wait until the end of the uh, 18 holes to do that because then I can do a quick search on my broadcast software um, I have to say Edward learning to do a VR setup in your home like it's when you when, when it's just you by yourself it's really challenging because obviously you have to like press the start button um, I could actually have it triggered so it has the start and then like after a minute after the intro song it then goes automatically to me but then I have to sort of have faith in it you know just start talking and then it <laughs> turns out it wasn't actually switched and stuff like that so you do have to keep taking the headset to look um, but it's amazing what you can do with DIY these days um, from home. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, have a lot of our meetings at the company in-game when we're working on the level. Of course. We'll go into the level to talk about it, but then we're all taking notes, so suddenly everyone's faces will just go... Right. <laughs> ...as people are writing things down and taking their headset on and off. Now, I don't know what the technical term is for this, but I know that in some games they have, like, dev, like, secret rooms and that, uh, where, like... You know, objects are sometimes kept or assets, um, and sometimes they forget to or just decide not to remove them, and then people find them later in the game. Obviously, I'm not expecting you to tell me where one is now, but are there secret rooms uh, for devs only on any of the levels? Uh, not in the levels because we're doing the same game over and over again. We don't have to test right like a new weapon or new armor. I see what you mean. So we. We do have a couple of custom scripts that... Okay, when I say we, I mean me, because <laughs> I designed the balls and the putters, and so I want to always be able to test them. So I've got custom scripts to give me certain things, and same with a couple of the other devs, but we we just don't include them in the game. Fair uh, enough, yeah. Unfortunately. That makes sense. That said, we do hide a lot of secrets, but, like, just fun things to look out for. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, not on this level, but on a lot of levels, I have taken to hiding corpses around the place because I think it's funny. <laughs> so, keep an eye out for hidden bodies because I think it's funny. <laughs> right, I will be looking out. I mean, I've, I, yesterday I played the gothic level uh, and there was obviously a lot, but that was just a part of the scenery, but you mean there are bodies. Yeah, the, uh, 
I think the most famous one is in the candy level. Oh, I've not played that there one yet. There is a okay. candy corpse. Candy corpse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Now, I'm wondering... You probably can go up that ridge, but you're going to have to be dead straight. Yeah. Whereas if you do that, you got a bit more leeway. So I'm actually going to try that instead and probably regret it. Okay. Needed to hit it a little bit harder. Ooh. All right. Well, I'm going to try and go dead straight. Here we go. Oh. See, perfect. Nailed it. 100%. I, didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I'm sure it was dead straight. Oh, yeah. Perfect. That's what, a hole in one. Uh, just close your eyes the next time I take the shot. <laughs> nice. Just looking for the ball, it's going to be. There it is. So, one, uh, one of my bits of feedback from playing this game in terms of a feature I would like, and it might be something you've considered and it's just decided not to, is I would love to have the option at least to have a second hand to like. I, I, there's so much gesturing you can do with like just the one and like the facial expressions are amazing so I'm not saying like oh it's very hard to express yourself in this game it's really easy and people watching this stream will see from uh, us having a discussion uh, how much that <laughs> is but um, yeah sometimes it's like when you get one in you want to be able to like high five or just you know two handed go yay um, I was wondering is that something that's ever been considered or I don't know a lot yeah we the problem is that the second you hold two controllers, it occludes the tracking of the main one you're putting with, because that is always lower right. if you're putting. Yes. Which means that you can't take the shot. Uh, so eventually we're like, oh, okay, well, two hands on one putter. But then it's like, well, do you, when you go to take a putt, do you make a second hand appear and then you disappear it for sure. them? What are you doing it with the rest of the time? For a while, we were trying to see if, say, on the, uh, the Quest headsets, uh, they have inbuilt hand tracking, but it can't run at the same time as controller tracking. Right. And we were constantly pestering their team, <laughs> going, Are you sure yeah. we could do it at the same time? It would be awesome. Yeah. But it's one of those things that if we can figure out how to make it work, we'll put it in. But. Yeah. yeah, you just can't use two controllers because it just breaks the game. Yeah, it's really interesting you mention that because, yeah, I, I heard that a lot. I mean, i fortunate enough I've not had that issue because in early days on the stream we'll see it now is on this sense controller stream, I hold like that there. Whereas the issue is like if I was to do that, you're then blocking the sensors here. Whereas I'm actually like the sense ring on the controller, Edward, I sort of sort of just hold it with the other hand. So they are a bit distant, but I am sort of doing two hands. Um, but yeah, that's a really interesting problem with the with the current hardware. Or chol it, challenge, shall we say. Is challenge the right term? <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge. <laughs> Not a problem. All things can be solved. Yeah. We just have to figure out. <laughs> I also have the speed on max 5 meters per second, just so I can, like, you know, accelerate. But I also can just, like, nudge it and go down slowly. Um, it's nice to have that choice. Sounds. There is a lot of time placed into making it sound. It's amazing how a level, even if all the graphics stuff is finished before the sounds, it really doesn't feel right. Well, it, it's often like uh, to have music and background music that's even more minimal. You're like, oh, that's probably easy because you put in less in. No, it's even more challenging because you've got to be even more particular with how things complement um, I mean I always forget the name of this one is it Cherry is it called Cherry, Cherry Blossom, Blossom. yeah um, playing that I think the only sounds I could really hear was like the water running it was kind of like minimalist instruments I don't know if it was harp or something like that uh, hearing yeah hearing the birds and sort of the, the, wind, the, the, the light breeze just four or five sounds and it was just so peaceful um yeah so for this one yeah we we've 
we've got a composer called Chris Raymond, and he might just be the most talented man alive, as far as I'm concerned. This, it's, it's, there's, it's just always perfect. It's absolutely always perfect. And has he been doing the music since the start? Well, we didn't have music for a while. Uh, because, you know, this was a little game. We weren't, you know, sure if people would even like it. I mean, you know, right. we like it. Ooh, so close. And yet so far. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we weren't sure if uh, people would get into it. So it was when the game first launched, it only had four levels. The next four came as free DLC because, you know, the game was doing really well. People liked it and we were able to... We could afford to put ones in free, and then well, we can't afford to do that. We started making them as paid DLC. And people really love it, and, and everyone's just been so dang nice to us. Right? It, there's always talk about oh, you know, gaming communities they can be a bit, mm, but we've never experienced that. The entire every gaming community, the everyone has been just so lovely. Mm. We're so incredibly, incredibly lucky, basically. Um, and so we spend our time trying not to uh, screw anyone over. No, of course. It's, it's getting that balance, isn't it? Like, you know, when, when games were moving to PSVR 2, people were just wanting free upgrades for games they'd already bought. And some developers came forward and said, we're a small team, um, we'd love to, but it's either develop a new game that you can sell or work on the the transition which we can't it's going to cost us and um you know that honesty is it's an honest conversation that needs to be had and you know some aspects of any community can be toxic but um i definitely think there's a lot of goodwill in this one which i which i love and this is definitely a game obviously i've just jumped into i was fortunate enough to have the key codes but i'm someone that unless i do get future codes i would happily pay for um uh, additional maps uh, or courses. Although what I would say, I'm a sucker for progression systems. If you ever did a a battle pass that you pay for like premium cosmetics, I would so do that. And uh, you know, stuff to grind for. You know, with XP or stuff. But um, I also understand that you guys may have made a decision that no, that's not the kind of game we want to make. We want people to just score themselves based on how under par they are, not. You know, grinding XP or these other metrics. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's also just what would fit with the feeling of mini golf, effectively. Yeah. And you know, when when we do a level for a couple of dollars, we can squeeze in uh, the main level, the night variant, the balls, the putter, and generally a couple of avatar options. And so, because we can put all those in, right. we don't want to then hide it more sure. behind more stuff. We want to be like. Effectively, as cheap as we can afford it, yeah, is the best price. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, it's. I just. I don't know about grinding in mini golf. <laughs> I really wonder. Oh, you give me a lot to think about that. Oh, there we go. Well, if if they ever end a massive uh, battle pass, premium battle pass that everyone hates, everyone goes, "This was it. It was miles." Miles, Miles, oh, put that evil. You. Can... If you start adding loot boxes. <laughs> oh my god. Could you imagine mini golf loot, loot boxes? boxes? Oh my goodness. Yeah. So you're in Melbourne. Um, the team are all over the world. Has that always been the case for this company? Or was it uh, was it an op opportunity that came about because of the pandemic? Because um, how long have you guys been working together on I, I don't actually know how old this game is it's a few years old is it yeah so the game came out in September of 2020 uh, this was a lockdown project of Lucas <laughs> the guy who owns Mighty Coconut right and Mighty Coconut was previously an animation company um, that you know done a couple games but and in the world of animation you tend to say oh we're doing a project we'll hire people for the project and then everyone disperse again uh, but because this project has kept going, it's become just sort of a more stable, all right, everyone's here for the long haul sort of company. So when I joined, uh, it was just, oh, here's this one project of Walkabout Mini Golf. And it was just me and Lucas. And then Henning, who is our main 
level designer now. He joined, and then someone else, and someone else, and someone else, just because Walkabout Mini Golf was so, you know, popular and could keep going. So when I joined, the everyone was in different locations because Lucas was in Austin, Texas, and I was in Melbourne, Australia. And as the games progressed, they've been able to bring on uh, more people they've worked with previously who pre-pandemic a lot are in Austin, Texas. So there's this big chunk in Austin. There's a big chunk in Boise or Boise. I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and then there's some in Oregon and a lot spread out across America. Mostly. Have you have you met have you met them all in Australia? <laughs> have you met them all in person? Not. I've gone across to Texas, uh, but not everyone was in Texas at the time. So I right. met most. <laughs> That's cool though. I met everyone in the game though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. almost the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I work. I work um, in uh, my main job. I actually work as a content development manager for a cybersecurity company, mainly based in London, but it's a remote first company, and so it's been an interesting. Uh, I've been there just over a year now. Um, I, I was working freelance for six years before, so you know, at that point, I was working from home a lot and going out to the occasional meeting. But it's been a really interesting thing of working with people and then, you know, meeting twice a year at a, a summit that we'll do just to get together. And um, it's a whole new world for that. And, you know, VR, um, I look forward to that becoming actually a reality for, you know, not just developers and architects and those kind of industries, but for general meetings as well. But I, I think that's only a matter of years now. Yeah, I think it's getting closer faster than, or well, faster than I expected. Mm. It's crazy how even when you've got your sort of low poly avatars in this game, or if you're, say, early on we used the Meta Workrooms software yep. a lot, and you look sort of like a knockoff Disney princess, <laughs> and even then it was still more engaging than a Zoom call. So. I, I have to assume it's going to take off. Yeah. Because I don't know about you, but I, I love working from home. Uh, the commute, especially, is terrific. Yes. Yeah, the commute from my bed to my studio next door is wonderful. Oh, no, I've missed it. Jump. <laughs> Jump. And I found a ball there. How we doing, chat? We doing good. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already, uh, and subscribe. Got some amazing live streams uh, planned, uh, and I was really excited to kick it off with this one. Um, once again, Edward, really grateful for your time this morning. Um, this is it's awesome. This I is love being here. This is such an awesome way of uh, doing an interview. <laughs> Ryan, My someone. natural ground. Yeah. I live here. On your home it's turf. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's not <laughs> every day. The commuter was wonderful. Yeah, it's not every day that you get to, like, you know, do your work. And not just on your home turf, but I built this turf. <laughs> 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 right. I'm actually just going to. You're in my battleground now. Yeah. I'm just going to smash this and hope for the best. <gasps> oh, it just went over. I'm going to replay that again. It was so close. All right. I always like holding the grip button on this level as you watch it. Uh, oh, go to the, yeah. Fly into the distance and you just go, oh, it, it could come back. Yeah. Ooh, these treats look nice. I had a lot of fun with this level, eating a lot of different uh, foods and being like, yes, well, I have to put that in the game now. I had a lot of fun learning how mooncakes are made, which it, you make for is the this, autumn festival. I is believe. this is this mooncake? Yes. So it's a sort of pressed pastry with Jam? different sorts of fillings, and they always have the uh, these really fun patterns on the top. I don't think it's jam; it's much more solid. Right. And you can get lots of different ones, like taro and yam, and they're really freaking nice. <laughs> so. Uh, during various, I think it's the Mid Autumn Festival or Spring Festival, go to Chinatown. I'm sure you'll find them, and they're freaking delicious. 
That's amazing. Right. Back here again. Oh, no. It was so close. <laughs> Snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. I'm watching that replay. Oh, it was just on that bit. Stop, stop. Nice. Go. Now, can you tell me the ball that you're hitting? Do you know what map that's from? Of course you do, but. Oh, or no, maybe my not. Goodness, I might. Once. <laughs> I'm going to look it up. Don't look it up. <laughs> I was just testing a bit of trivia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually want to know. I was I just there's... wanting to know if you knew off the top of your head because there's so many balls <laughs> in this game. Has that stumped you? <laughs> oh my god, this. And, uh, and the thing is, I've designed so many balls we haven't put in levels yet. Often I'll do custom ones for a level, but also whenever I get a, an idea, mm. I'll just make the ball. And if I think of a cool pattern, I'll make like 50 right. of it and be like, okay, one in this level, one the other level. So there's approximately 700, 800 balls I've designed at this point. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I don't know where they all are. <laughs> oh, not again. Um, what's the limit, isn't it, of... Um, is it eight? Eight attempts you get. I think it's like three or no. five over par. Oh, uh, okay. But you can turn it off. Yeah, you can. Uh... You can just go forever. Right, this is gonna undo. I was on minus six. This is gonna ruin me. Oh, we were head and head. Yeah. Oh, actually, no. Last hole, you were beating me. Is it gonna let me do one more? Nope. Straight. Uh, there we go. I'm on minus two now, so I'm still under par. That's fine. Um. But that's one of the most amazing parts of golf, isn't it? It's that one hole that completely undoes all the good work. Um. Absolutely. Right. Sand here, so. What I also love is just every so often when you're talking with people, you just stop and then you take in the. Oh, I've forgotten how soothing this music was. <laughs> we've, uh, Chris Raymond, uh, we, we've managed to put out his work on a soundtrack. Um, so we have we have a soundtrack for the game. I was going to ask, is it, it on so is it on Spotify? Yes, it is. Because I have a um, a work relax uh, playlist, and of, it's called like work relax focus or something, or in a different order. I'm definitely going to be adding the. Um, it's not labyrinth. It's um, in the. Is it Atlantis, the under the water one? Um, yes. Oh my goodness, that is one of the most incredible levels. Um, but yeah, I was like, I want that on my playlist. That level, uh, a lot of the environment work was uh, done by a chap called Tad, and all the character work in the game is done by a woman called Emma. She also does all the avatars, and they're both so freaking talented. It's amazing. Uh, every time they make things, it's it's just incredible to look at. Wow, here we are. So. So there's the safe bit to aim for, and then the not safe bit to aim for. I see. Nice. Come on. Oh. So close. It could come. It could bounce. It's gonna bounce back up in a minute. <laughs> it's just a little airborne. It's still good. It's still good. Oh, I should stop doing this. Ooh. That's the one. And it worked because you went right. In that I was uh, able to hit my microphone and oh yeah, <laughs> not get as much power as I thought. Oh, what the hell happened there? Saved. <laughs> I've never, oh, no. I've never scuffed it before like that. I don't know what happened there. Oh no! Ah, beans. 
Is My it... favorite is when you hit it with the corner of the club and it just seemingly goes off in a fun direction. It's like, oh. Not dang. again. That was embarrassing. No one look at me. Gee. I need to stop doing this. <laughs> but I'm always like, oh. But I've got to. Oh, my. Ooh. Right. Ooh. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, my goodness. After all that, is it going to let me have a turn here? If you I'm are. Relieved. Before we head on, yeah. one of my favorite views in the level. I love how smoky it is. Looking Misty. out. Oh, wow. Across there. That's amazing. The sun. I, um. So I um, talk about this quite a lot. I'm obsessed with flotation tanks, where you lie with the Epsom salt and you have the calming music. Um, I, I, I try and do them every couple of weeks. This kind of takes me to that kind of place. Not as deep, obviously, because it's a flotation tank. Uh, it has all sorts of effects on your body, but like <laughs> in terms of just that sense of being chilled and mindful, it's just, um, yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. what we aim for in some levels like this. It's funny, uh, there isn't any fog in this level um, this because we wanted it to be able to change colour and thickness depending on where you are, so it's faked. We can't uh, afford a volumetric fog. So what is this? Uh, to render. So it's actually based on where you are. We calculate what you should be doing and it's just part of the material. And it just overlays it. Wow! So it there's so there is nothing. And so there's nothing in the air. It's literally that the no, color of the items has changed. Just, yep. And we calculate it based on where you are, where you're looking, and that way we can say, oh, if you're in this area, we can make it look a bit thicker or a bit more this color or this color. Right. But it's all faked. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. I am absolutely ruining the magic. No. For all the lovely Do you know things. what? It's one of those things of like when a magician uh, shows you how the trick is done. There are those in the, the camp of, oh, it ruins the magic. But I'm someone who's like, no, it makes you appreciate it even more. Um, There's a lot of sneaky things done. Yeah, I'm also in the camp of how the magic is done is honestly cooler than the magic. I wanted to smack it, but I knew that that would have been a bad idea. Oh, you've got that good. That was very good. Thank you, thank you. I'm here all night. <laughs> <laughs> so, aside from Walkabout, which is obviously the best game ever made, um, have there been any other uh, PlayStation VR 2 titles that have just so in terms of like some of my favorites it all comes down to and this is why i was so excited for this game i like social vr games in vr you people that aren't used to vr it's it's totally understandable why you think it's quite an isolating experience you're putting a headset on you're closing yourself off from the real world but i love vr when i have friends over and family you put the headset on and you can see how they're reacting but then the other side of that is when you can be in a shared experience and you can be like, look at that. And like you and I right now, we're talking, we're, we're having that shared experience. I mean, my, my, ch my YouTube channel and a lot of what I do is around compassion and empathy. And like VR is this empathy machine. It allows you to share experiences based on wherever you are. Um, and so, yeah, for me, social games. Now, I've said all that lovely stuff about empathy and compassion, and then the next game I'm going to say is one that is not a lot about empathy and compassion, but it's Pavlov, the uh, shooter game. But <laughs> it is 
a shared experience where it does have eye tracking, it does have mouse move, but their TTT mode, which is like the Among Us style, is some of the most fun I've had in VR because you're just there with your friends tricking each other, you know, and um, the fact that you're, you know, interacting in this space and there's a lot of different game modes, um, I found that to be wonderful. Um, so Pavlov is on that list. Um, but there's a couple of games I, I really hope come to PSVR 2. One is Rec Room. I've always loved Rec Room. Um, again, for that shared experience, the fact that you can build um, your own rooms in it. Actually, one of the last things I did on Rec Room on PSVR was um, one of the first games I ever played as a kid when I was like six or seven was Wolfenstein 3D. And I've actually started designing the original level in it. Uh, and I've actually done the blue doors and the brickwork. Um, very yes. it's it's literally just the opening view but i'm like i need to look at what the blueprints are and i want some more advanced designers to help me but um for me that's kind of like the first step into um you know what can be done there um but also beat saber um i think beat saber um you know i love i, I love what simfride has done on psvr2 now with their multiplayer um i just want to see more multiplayer games so yeah at the moment pavlov is up there um Resident Evil Village is brilliant, although I'm an absolute scaredy cat. Um, I've only done two hours on this stream while wearing a heart monitor with my heart rate, and everyone got to <laughs> laugh at me being an anxious mess in the standing up fetal position. Um, I kind of feel like I'm drawing a blank on other games that I've played a lot of. I, I like Creed. Um, I don't play a lot of it because it's exhausting, but again, multiplayer. You get to box with people around the world. I got to have boxing matches with my viewers where they came on one at a time and we, we boxed it out. It's <laughs> it's just remarkable, man. So, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, VR is one of those experiences you think it's going to be about seeing things you've never seen before, but it's all about seeing things you've never seen before with people. That's it. Uh I remember uh, early uh, days of VR with sort of the Steam VR home and people were often making custom environments or porting environments from other games and I remember me and a friend, because you could do it with people, going around uh, I think the Silent Hill 2, uh, they just ported the maps. There weren't any monsters but it was foggy and still so right. oppressive and we were both shaking in our little boots. Uh, as we explored a completely empty map. <laughs> wow, yeah. Wow. Uh, I see what you've done there. See the future when they have a little smell of vision style VR so you can like smell incense while here. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I mean, I think this and maybe the candy level would be worth smelling, but not the gothic. Labyrinth one does yeah. go into the, the labyrinth goes into the bog of eternal stench, so <laughs> probably best avoided. Yes. Ooh. Oh, uh, another VR title that blew me away was Gran Turismo. Uh, I actually got just opposite me a steering wheel racing rig, and when I f nice. when I first went into that and turned the first corner, I felt the G-force pushing me into the wall. Obviously, it was all in my head, but your body's so used to feeling it. Um, that was remarkable, um, and that's been a nice way for me to connect with my dad again in gaming because. My dad got me into gaming when I was very little. He doesn't really game much anymore. But it was when I bought the, the rig, I was like, this is something that's going to get my dad to come over and game with me. And he's been doing it quite a lot. Uh, and he now is that's like, so nice. I've got my friends over. Can I bring them over to yours to show? And I'm like, that's the thing about VR. And, you know, we were talking about, like, you know, the shared experience. The reason I always talk so enthusiastically to friends and colleagues about VR isn't because I want to tell them this is what you do in it. I'm doing it because I want to convince them to just experience it, you know? I can explain it all I can, 
but all I'm trying to do is explain to you the, why you need to you need to put the headset on um, because you know telling it is never going to come close to to being here I, I cannot begin to explain how big of a smile I could feel on my face when I started playing this game because just the feeling of presence is um, remarkable I mean as well in particular this game uh, I don't know now we're going up there I, I obviously try yeah. I am going to walk I it I try and watch all the I try and watch all the streams of people playing see what people's thoughts are and me or oh my, it doesn't come across in a uh, flat screen. No. Every... It looks like a cheap low poly game in flat screen. Um, um, you know, I'm not going to lie, when I saw the trailer I was like, this looks kind of cool, but I don't know how it's going to feel. And as soon as I was in it, I was like, wow, yeah. It's, um... Including, you know, as you were saying with the graphics and that, like the characters, I thought looks very basic, which works, but I don't know how that's going to feel like the way the heads were like moving around quickly i thought that looks like it's going to be quite janky but it, it it really isn't it's um well yeah it's just the, the the truth that all the rules for flat screen gaming don't always translate sometimes they do uh which is why resident evil is just amazing yes but sometimes they don't Oh, I can't actually fly down there. <laughs> Ooh. Come back. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you create a, um, definitely a, a kind of a symptom where people start talking to inan inanimate bulls a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. The amount of uh, anger I've directed at small virtual pieces of right yeah that's right actually not even real bulls but virtual yeah <laughs> where did yours land yours was at the bottom right yeah yep in the sand I see done thank you thank you Something we, uh, it's not as apparent in this level, but we still try and do it, is the idea that uh, there are just lots of little, not just sort of stories, in that you can just look around and see what people were doing. Right. Uh, yeah. Just before you got it here. Looks li it looks like, live so like, it looks like people have been here, yeah, doing, yeah. See, so yeah, down here you can see someone was having lunch, sitting on the edge, overlooking into the chasm but then uh, the night version of this course is the festival so this has been patched up with wood all their stuff isn't there instead of lanterns and food being made everything's out right for serving and eating and decorated oh you were right so <laughs> not what I wanted, but I'll take it anyway. So I can. The artifact. Oh, thank you. But that is beautiful. <laughs> that was stunning. I should be playing all my games at 6 a.m. Not normally <laughs> this good. Apparently, I'm just a bit looser. There we go. We've got two left. Um, let's have a quick look for the ball. Mm. I will come back for this one. I might find it in here. It's funny because I remember where the where your ball was hidden. Right. It's 18. Of bogey's bonanza. Very good. No idea where mine's. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'll come back for that. I can't 
there is a way to hold in one this, but I've never quite figured it out. Oh, wow. So you can come oh, no. Is that not going to curve? Mm. If you can get it into the middle. Yeah. Side. Hysterically good at this game. Um, you know, people will be like, "Oh well, if you aim for this spot, this little dot on the green, uh, which uh, which we don't place, it's uh, part of the material. It's just automatically generated." But they will figure out which dot to aim right. for to get a hole in one. Mm. And I'm always amazed and impressed. Well, the thing is, I, I was playing a flat screen mini golf game in the last year. I can't remember which one it was, but um, it was great. But like all the tutorials online until they changed the physics, you know, it's saying like, here's the bar of how hard you're going to hit it. I love it. I'm gesturing with two hands, but you can only see one. But you have like a bar that's <laughs> going between and, you know, you've got to tap it when it's like at a, so many bars across for the power. Whereas on here, it's like, OK, you can yeah. still say you've got to aim for this area, but the power is how you swing it like um when playing with our friends uh on here it's like you got to hit it hard but what does that mean from one person to the next like how do you articulate that um i don't know if anyone's and then there are some holes which other people are fine with and you find impossible uh, me and my sister were playing a couple nights ago with the stroke limit turned off and we got to about 25 wow the holes <laughs> And I've never struggled with that one before, but just for some reason, that day, it was uh, not my day for it. <laughs> so the other feature I would love this game to have is team matches, where either, you know, if you, you had like eight players, two teams of four or four teams of two, and you either have it where everyone still plays, but then you add people's pars together, or... You do it where they pass it on, so they do a whole each. Um, oh, like Mario Kart. I'd I love it because I think it would also because I, I played a, a seven-player one last night for the first time, and they do go on. They text forever. It, um, it is good, good fun though. Um, we do have different gameplay modes that we want to do. I know one that the problem is it involves a lot of rewriting the game because. When the game came out, it was dead simple. It was, you know, short. All right, here's how. And so all the code was set up, assuming you joined a room and you played through. And, and of course, everything's built on that. So we've got all these different game modes we want to do, but it also means that to get there, we have to rip out all the old code right. and put in new code to recreate what's already here, right. but different. And it's something we're working on. Um, for example, a game mode I know we really want to do is where everyone just goes at the same time. Right, yeah. So, you're not bumping into each other's balls, but it's just, doesn't matter how many hits, who gets to the end first? Ah, uh, okay. Like, Interesting. Yeah. You know, um, something like that. Because when we were playing the seven player one and people kept joining, I know you can say either they start on the hole that you're on, so they skip all of them, or they can play catch up. What I didn't realise was catch up doesn't mean you keep playing and if they can catch up, they can catch up. You do actually have to wait for them. I'm assuming yeah, that would be a, a, a code issue. Based. Yeah. I assume yeah. that would be a it, code it's issue. It's like an RTS. Yeah, right. No, not RTS. A uh, turn based yeah. strategy game. Right, so where are we? Oh, wow, we're heading. Wow. Down yeah, there. do not uh, use the trigger to get to the next ball. I really recommend we oh. should walk to it. Yeah, yeah, just to let you know, people. So when you pull the main trigger, it, it spawns you. So that's you can always make sure you get to the best one next one. Um, right, I guess I'm just gonna. <laughs> I have no idea what it's bouncing off, but it's gone right down there is that oh it has actually landed somewhere all right let's right yeah let's go yeah, down let's oh i want to play this yeah. 
don't know what sound they're meant to make. I wasn't going to be able to replicate it. I think that'd be it. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a that was. I'm sure someone can clip it and, and add the actual sound to it. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we were looking over where the uh, lunch was, uh, that this was. Um, I was wondering what this was going to be a part of. Wow. This is amazing. Good luck finding the lost ball on oh, this Oh yeah, one. I've sort of thought I'll have to come back <laughs> to this one. a space. Yeah. I can even imagine how it would actually feel being here with all the, the mist. Yeah, that nice sort of thick air. Yeah. And what is great is like if this was a, if this was a real place, whenever you take photos where there's mist, the camera always never captures as much mist as you can see on regular. It, whereas I know it on gets the rid of the mist. It gets rid of the mist. Whereas I know on this live stream people are gonna be able to see the mist, so that's uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I remember when making this level, I made this bell, um, but the and there wasn't really a stand-in, so I remember modeling it. And then the first time I saw it in VR, I was like, "It's so big! Yes, it's amazing!" <laughs> <laughs> and not to you know trumpet my own work, but it was just the first time seeing how large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sense of scale you get in VR is just out there. Absolutely. Also, I think we both missed it, but if you hit the bell with the ball, it does ring. I think I did hear it up there. Um, well done. I go, I go. Stay away from the sand. There we go, so we will now be taken to the sky. And here we go. Well, Edward, minus ten. Very good. On your own the best course. I've ever played in my life. Is that right? There we go. And <laughs> I'm so glad it was caught on stream. Yeah, we go. Now we can. Yeah, this is this has been uh, logged for the history books now. Um, I mean, I'm 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 definitely happy getting under par for my first go with this. Um, and actually, there's only one, two, three, four, five balls remaining. But to unlock the hard ones, you have to either get ten balls or finish yep. under par. Um, which, so you've doubled up there. So I've doubled up there. I've definitely assured it. But I just love looking around and... Uh, yeah, look at all these uh, different places. And actually, you can use the teleport button to go anywhere. So down here. Yeah, this is a... It's a fun experiment, this one. I tried doing the thing they do at Disney parks where things get smaller in the distance. Right. Um, so if you go down, these buildings shrink... Uh, but it turns out that doesn't work that well in VR, so all future levels, everything in the distance is full size. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. So it's sort of... Who lives here? If we do an animal... <laughs> There's a rabbit. I'm feeling an Alice in Wonderland yeah. character. <laughs> yeah. And then... The bridge... Yeah, we never did little things in the distance again. Everything is after this full size. Yeah. But if you come out here, you do get a beautiful view of the level. Yeah. It is amazing. I'll turn back into the big head again. Yep. That might have been me. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Right. Well, let's just go back to the main menu. Um... And actually, yeah, the balls now, uh, just show everyone, look, these are the ones that we've collected. So 
so many. And that's the one I've chosen. I love these. And then, of course, if you are on a hard mode, you can unlock putters instead that's of balls. That's it. I've got the one from the... Le uh, how many ever leagues it was? Twenty thousand leagues under the sea. Uh, I've got that's the only one I've got, which is here. Yeah, that one. That's an amazing level. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, here are all the pools. Right, um, Edward. Thank you so much. Um, would it be okay if I was to just quickly look in the chat and just go through some questions that have been asked? Absolutely. All right. Um, so, uh, chat, um, just coming over here. Um, holy hot dog smiles. That's a lot of bulls. Um, got lots of questions <laughs> recorded. Let me post now. Our oh, Karina's going to do it. Thank you so much, Karina. Um, I was thinking. Okay, number one. Uh, is this developed in Unity? If not, what game engine? And actually, thank you, Karina, because what I'm going to do is make this larger now so um, I can actually just keep peeking. Can you um, just post them one at a time after each question? Just give us... If you just stop them, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to keep up. Um, so, yeah, we'll just do that one. So talk about the, the, the engine that was used for this, please. Yeah, so we use uh, a version of Unity... Although, like any game, after you, after enough time, you just end up coding a bunch of your own little bits and add-ons and tools and systems. Like the wind, it's not a Unity system. Same with uh, the fog. I mean, obviously they're in Unity, but then they weren't off the shelf. They were things we had to build. And you can see now, if, you know, you look at all the leaves and trees. Yeah. In the, you know every level up to Kyoto, unless there's a specific reason not to have it, we tend to have uh, wind moving, just giving that little bit of life. Mm. Um, so yeah, we use uh, Unity. Uh, the modeling originally was done in, uh, I think it was Lightwave, or some program that no longer exists, uh, that Lucas was fond of, and but now we do everything in Blender, uh, okay. which is really fun. But of course, uh, Blender was really good both because it's uh, free and really accessible but also because it being open source it's really easy to make our own add-ons for so now we've got like 30 or 40 different tools in Blender just for modeling and getting stuff to work in this game right 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 um, what would be your dream mini golf level <laughs> I mean, I feel like you can't even say this because I'm sure it's going to be... So I mean... Because it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess, to be honest, like, there isn't... Anything's possible with this game now in terms of the IP. I mean, I was thinking a lot about, is it Power Wash Simulator? They do now, like, all these different levels where you've got to clean, like, the tanks from Final Fantasy VII Remake and all these different... Um, I think they've got a Ghostbusters level... I mean, you're already working with other oh, IPs, but I mean, it could come to a point where you know you could, you know, work with one of Sony's first IPs and you know and work for there. Like the sky's the limit, really, isn't it? I want people to come to us. I want people to go. Oh, you're the mini golf game. We've got to work with you. Yep. Uh, the fun thing is, if you're choosing uh, something to change for mini golf. It's got to be where it's not the characters that are interesting, it's the environment. The location. I mean, the characters can be interesting, but say like Labyrinth, it's all about the puppets and the characters, and mm. they're great, but the Labyrinth itself is enough of a character that you're just like, oh, I really, really want to go to there. Whereas something like The Office, the characters are, you know, really, really funny in both versions, but no one wants to just stand around in an office. Right. So... Yeah, I mean, my dream one would probably be Bioshock. Bioshock. So I've never played Bioshock, but obviously so cool. seeing the levels and yeah, the the atmosphere would be amazing. Um, I, I would love to. I, I would love for you to make a, a really scary, scary one with jump scares, like a Dead Space or um, Resident Evil, Raccoon City kind of uh, one. I think that'd be great. Um, one that you'd have to put a warning on saying. Just to let you know, this one is going to have jump scares. <laughs> I 
I'd love to see a jump scare in a mini golf. Game. I know, like when you putt it, because because it'd be the perfect environment because everyone's always concentrating on the putting, and that's when you can get people. Um, so yeah. Everyone's always looking down. Yeah, that's it. Always when they're looking down. Yeah. Um, right. Let's have a look. Next question. Oh my God, moles! Never play Bioshock. I know it's on my gasp list. Um, let's have a look here. Can you fly when only using one controller? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, so the game is effectively meant to be played with one controller. It's a bit harder on PlayStation VR. You have to hold the button for like 10 seconds to turn it off. and it's. But the game was made with one controller in mind. So all the controls are on. Well, you can't see my controller, but yeah. you know I'm holding one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Uh, next question. We had so many coming through. Um, is a game with more realistic graphics a possibility? Um, I mean, I'm not sure I understand the question, but like, I guess you're... It's one we get a lot. Yeah. Um, just, you know, because especially when making something for like PC VR or PlayStation VR, you know, making it more just realistic feeling like more of an actual mini golf place um for this game probably not for future games we might make maybe but in the case of this we've chosen a particular aesthetic and pushed into it as hard as we can and i think it works in fact i think it works uh, for it though doesn't it because for mini golf you just want people to know where the ball is and where you're going and having this you know simpler i don't think it's a simple aesthetic but a simpler to like ultra realism if you've got ultra realism you'd lose the ball a lot more and yeah it's ultra realism is i think less inviting whereas this in this particular case we wanted it to be cartoony um but it's also really funny that say on the quest and the pico this is the highest poly game that runs we wow have really simple shaders and very simple physics and the game run you know we can do things a bit slower uh and so generally say a quest can handle about 80 to 100 thousand triangles at a time and we're often pushing 600 thousand right because you can see the whole level and we aren't using textures for details it all has to be modeled wow um so just piping low poly it's a very high poly yeah let me just scroll down. <laughs> when is the next DLC coming and what is it? Are you able to s speak to that? Or any of that? Uh, so, oh, we're getting, we've got to be getting pretty close. We, uh, we've gone to the point where every, say, six to eight weeks, we can do a level. However, one of the important things about this company uh, is that we don't believe in crunch time, which is Good. a problem with game development. Yes. Uh, so we tend not to announce a level until a couple days beforehand, especially a release date, because we want it to be finished before we announce it. And that way no one has to panic and overtime. Because, especially with a new one every couple weeks, we'd, uh, we'd all burn out. Yes. And to be honest... Uh, especially with us being here for the long haul. Absolutely, absolutely. And to be honest, you know, this is the sort of game where you can afford to drop it a couple of days before because it's you've got this community here that's just playing it, and you know, it's not like you complete a level and it's like, oh, I'm done with that. Where's the next one? Like, you want to keep going back, you want to keep honing your craft, if I can call it that. Um, there's, yeah. there's always, there's always more to do, and so I, I love that question was asked though because that could so easily be interpreted one of two ways, which is. I've had enough of the base game already that's been out for a matter of days. Give me something new. <laughs> or it's, this is Give so amazing, I need more of it. <laughs> Give me more. Um, that is my only concern with this game, which is there is. are people that have had it since the beginning that have you know, had levels come out gradually. I've just been spoilt with 18 courses. I want to make sure that I don't, you know, I want to kind of take my time with it, but I also do want to blitz it. But, I mean, I've already... I've only played half of them, I think, so far. And that's not even the hard ones included. So, um, it is You're amazing. You're going to love the hard ones. Yeah. The only hard one I've played fully was the underwater one. Um, 
Uh, actually, both underwater ones, the uh, 20,000 Leagues and... Um, actually, no, I didn't play that. I did the um, the clues for it. Um, I, did, I actually did it on practice ah, mode. Nice. Um, yeah. Um, cool, right, next. It's... Uh, yeah, keep, 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 keep speaking while I look up the next question. To... Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's funny because the game has progressed and we have gotten better. We've developed more tools that we can use makes means we can make stuff faster we can put more time into more stuff just polish it more so if you play the game from first level to most recent each one is a bit better than the one before and so if you go play you know we don't change levels once they're out uh because you know, that would be unfair to the people who you know who learned to play them yep um we might rebake the lighting occasionally because we can make it run a bit faster but if but that shouldn't even be noticeable, uh, hopefully. It would just give you a couple, a little performance boost. That's awesome. But if you go play Tourist Trap, which is the first level, mm -hmm. it it's completely different in terms of how much stuff is in it. But it's still a really fun level, and I go back and I play it. But it is a universe of difference between that and Atlantis. That's awesome. Um, the next one is about the mist level, which... I'm actually going to take us to in just practice mode. Um, so let me just go there and then I will ask you the question. Um, missed. And I'll just do it as practice mode. Wow. So I've not actually been on this yet. Um, so the question is, how, how did this um, collaboration come about? Um, so we were looking for collaborations and we reached out to Cyan uh, who made the Mist Games and we said hey ha what would your thoughts be on collaborating with us to make a level and they already knew of us they had made Mist their VR port of it which is just the freaking greatest is it? I'm, yeah. uh, Mist is my favourite game of all time because I'm a big nerd uh, who likes puzzle games. And so for me, it was like, oh my god, we're, we're doing a mist level. Um, but they'd already heard of us uh, being in the VR space, and they were, they, they basically just said yes. They were like, yeah, 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 we'd love to do it, we'd love to do it. And then they proceeded to be the nicest people in the world. Amazing. Um, whenever we talked about things, suggested things, they were so on board with basically all the weird stuff we wanted to try and all the strange things we wanted to do so it was basically the most wonderful collaboration process you could ever ask for um and it was nice because even though say you know the labyrinth level which was the ip that preceded it um the joy was getting to see the labyrinth outside of the movie for the first time. The joy of this was seeing Mist Island with other people rather than alone. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um, lots of people in the chat are saying hello to you, Edward. Um, I'm, just looking, hello. I'm just looking at the time now because um, I did say I would invite people to game with me afterwards but I think we're going to be running short on time so I might do it for a nine whole course um, once I say goodbye to Edward so just time for a few more questions um, Karina uh, huge huge thanks to you um, moderating um, if you could post another one in um, and while we while I wait for that question let me uh, take us to the the um, Atlantis one that I absolutely love because I just have to show him this um, so Here we go, look at this. This is, this just blew my mind. This, like, just the, 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 the sunlight, um, the way the light rays come down, it's just unbelievable. And I'm sure it does look great on stream, but it just will not compare to actually being in it. Can you fly up? 
to the surface. I know, you, like, can you actually reach it, or will you hit an invisible wall? You can go forever. Um, you will reach the surface, and it's really annoying because by it takes like five minutes to get there on the fastest speed. And by the time you get there, you really want there to be something above there the isn't. surface. But all that happens is you, it stops rendering that texture, and I'm going, oh, well, what a waste. <laughs> I've wasted five minutes checking this out. It's all the uh, the sea life, from the whales to the hammerheads to the great whites. Um. Yes, we, uh, once again, it was, this was a fun one because we built a new system for the fish. Uh, it's a, a sort of a flocking system where, because we can't afford to, so to say, like, the big animals are hand animated, but rendering a skeleton, uh, uh, sort of skeleton character, is heavy on some headsets, so we had to build a system that could handle flocking the fish, uh, that would go in particular areas, in particular groups, but still manage it by itself, without them being hand animated. Right. It was a, a really weird process, but they're so fun, and they worked out nicely. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, next question. Uh, do the switches in Mist do anything? I did manage to raise the ship, someone said. Uh, so I'm trying to remember what each thing does. Because Mist, uh, I wasn't able to hide any corpses in. <laughs> so I had a lot of fun hiding. I think I managed to hide a reference to every other Cyan game. Including the manhole. Like, everything is in the Mist level. And we wanted everything to be interactable, so lots. I don't want to spoil it, basically. That's fair enough. Everything sort of does something, but I'm trying to remember what actually made the final <laughs> cut. Well, I'm going to ask you to spoil something for me here. Is there a dead body on this level? God, that's a good. I don't think there was in the end. I think we just went for. Um, I'm waiting for you to say, "Hey, do you want to come uh, see a dead body?" Animated crabs. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, but we ended up just settling for lots of crabs. I love the wave crabs and when they away. wave at you. <laughs> so good. It's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, cool, I've got time for one more question. Uh, we are officially under the sea. We are indeed. Um, one more question, and then I will let Edward head off and. Have, a, have breakfast and a coffee. Um, other than new courses, are there any other modes that are planned for the game? Anything planned for the game that couldn't be added? Well, let's just take it simply. Like we, we, we spoke earlier about multiplayer, like as an idea, and you were talking about um, like real time, where it's just who can get to the end first. Um, are there any other ideas that you would like to see that you know? Oh yeah, so. Um We've got a lot of these in progress, so I'm sure I'm not actually confirming anything because they're all just in Ab Absolutely. But one of my favourites, and if you use Steam VR, you can test this, is you can change the render scale. So it's meant to be that if you feel a bit sick, you can change the scale of the world, and that's just an option, not in our game, but for all Steam VR games. Okay. But you can push it to extremes, so you can golf, and the golf ball can be like half a meter wide and you've got to hit it really hard or the golf ball is really tiny oh. even tinier than it already is and you're a giant and <laughs> honest to goodness it is the most fun you will I have bet. Um, you make me want you to so create a foot golf level where instead of a club you have a, 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 a foot a leg and a foot and it's like a soccer ball it's size a leg attached to the yeah it is there's a not Basically, well. as soon as you break the game in a fun way, it's a whole new method right. uh, of playing. And so there's, we're always, um, you know, listening for ideas, but also always trying to experiment, see what we can get to work. Because say, if we have a version where you're really tiny and the game is huge, well, that's just, now you can replay all the levels in that fun way. And that's just more fun than you can have yeah. in game. Like, having modifiers and stuff. That's exactly. amazing. 
So that's something we're always playing around with, basically trying to get it to work. That's great. Right, I'll just take us back to the main menu. Um, just wait. Or well, Edward. Um, look, uh, I, I'm incredibly grateful. I, I'm, I'm surprised. I, I thought we'd be like an hour together, and it's been an hour and 40 minutes. Um, <laughs> time really does fly when you're having fun, but you've been incredibly generous with your time. Um, are there any final things that you'd like to say um, about Mighty Coconut or, or um, Walkabout Mini Golf before you head off? Um, no. I mean, it's just we have a lot of fun making it and we're just glad people are enjoying it and as long as people enjoy it we'll be here we've got levels we're working on currently that won't release till 2025 wow. like we just I, I mean we finish a level just before it comes out but the process of making one is hideously long yes um so we're we're, we're always working on it and yeah just keep having fun if people have ideas or thoughts always share it or always li we're always listening and um if you want to get into game dev uh just keep an eye on our social media and our website because you know often we're expanding i, I don't know it's, it's a really nice company i really like it and everyone loves the game and the community it's, it's just ridiculously cheerful all the time <laughs> It's, it, it's, it is it is an amazing community, and when I first jumped in before the game came out for PSVR 2, I obviously went for quick play, and I just started playing. It was late one night, um, playing with a, an, a fellow British guy who was on Quest. Incredibly helpful, um, and uh, it's just a really great community. Um, so, yeah, look, Edward, I want to say a huge, huge thank you for, for your time. Um, it's been really great chatting. I've learned a lot about this. Um, I already had a huge appreciation for this game, but now I, I have a, an even greater one. Um, I know that the um, live chat will be um, incredibly grateful, and obviously afterwards you can watch back the live chat. And if anyone's watching on replay, do let us know in the comments your thoughts. Um, Walkabout Mini Golf is is out now, and it's not just available on PSVR 2. It's on Quest. It's on Pico. It's it's on, it's on everything, isn't it? Yeah, basically everything we can put it on. Uh, we'll put it there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's great. Um, thank you so, so much. Um, uh, we will definitely stay in touch and uh, we'll, we'll have to play a, a game. Uh, we'll have to have a rematch sometime Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on board. No worries. I'll catch you later. Boyers. Bye. Wow, that was amazing. Um, well, there we have it. Um, so much love for uh, Edward in the chat. Um, thank you, everyone. Really, really good. Now, listen, um, I did say I was going to allow people to join. Um, <laughs> but I've got an early start tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the chat, uh, the, the room. Um, but um, we're going to do just nine holes. Um, and so um, I'm just going to put the audio, I'm going to put voice chat down to zero. Just because I have to protect. Uh, there we go. So, uh, the room name. I don't know if I have to do it again. It's Miles Dyer Live 1. So, um, if you want to join me for a game right now on this live stream, uh, I won't be able to hear you, but um, join now. Uh, I will give a couple of minutes, and uh, yeah. Um, hey, Q Creator, how you doing? Right, we got Atmos here. How we doing? I can actually hear, I can hear people. This is, this is interesting. Okay, we've got people coming in now.
Nice. We got Jack. Great. And what we'll do is we will play. We'll keep it basic. We'll do the tourist trap, the very first one. And we will play the front nine. Front nine. And others can join. Okay, okay. Okay, I can hear everyone, so it seems I can't mute people. So I've just got to trust that everyone here is going to be nice and polite. <laughs> I promise. I <laughs> no promise. promise. Is that a face you can trust? <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> right. Uh, so it's me first. Here we go. Wow, I had a bit of jitter in the headset then as I swung. And that was not an excuse. <laughs> Let's see. Have a look here. That's amazing. We'll have to let them know about that. His voice chat is in zero percent. What did you guys all make of the uh, the chat with Edward? It was great. Yeah, I checked in for like the last half hour or so. Right. Um, but it was a really cool way to do an interview. Yeah. It was so interesting, just like hanging out with a friend and kind of asking questions. It was really cool. Absolutely. Yes, I made it. Hey, time to play. Hey, time to play. Hmm. Let's go. Are you able to turn off your TV office? audio? Because we're getting a lot of echo. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Sorry. Yeah, I will. <laughs> It's good to have you here, though. I get that all the time. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, it's all right. Normally, I wouldn't mind, but just for the live stream. Yeah, no, that's fine. Great. How do you feel it went, Miles? Were you nervous? I wasn't nervous. I, I mean, to be honest, the only thing I'm ever have um, a bit of cautious ca caution about is just the technical setup at the beginning. And it's yeah. no matter if it's me or doing an interview. I, I had a chat with him just ten minutes before, um, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think it went great. It, it Just really interesting perspectives. Um, and the reason we chose that uh, course, because I spoke beforehand, and Edward said it's one that they had, um, they'd worked on personally, so would have a lot to say about it. And I was like, perfect. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, it was good. I definitely would love to do more like that. Um, right, we're going to let... The ball down there, Hello. nobody's got it. What's, Hello. what's that? The ball. If anyone needs the oh, mystery yeah. ball or whatever, it's there. He seemed like a very nice guy as well, which definitely helped. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been a bit awkward if you were stuck on a 18-hole oh, course with goodness. somebody that was not a good interview. <laughs> yeah. Got brawling. Oh no, brawling is here. Sorry, I thought we were saying brawling had joined. That's me. Like, I thought you just I'm joined. I'm still here. All these <laughs> notifications. <laughs> Woo! Problem is, I've got a different name on here than I do on Discord, which just makes it <laughs> incredibly confusing for everyone. Ah, oh, it's all right. It's yeah, all right. Throw that club. Throw it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we have an option to throw the club? <laughs> That was Break a question it. I should have asked. Well, well, you could just take your controller off and throw it across the room. Well, I, did, I did consider that earlier. <laughs> oh, it's my turn. Oh, you yeah. took two minutes. It's all right. There, there. Next time. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pat with the club. Yeah. I love the fact that I learned that the skull on this ball was actually Edward's skull. Yeah, that was interesting. Oh. Yeah, it was a it was an MRI scan of his skull. Or, uh, uh, <laughs> it was a it, it is a scan, uh, maybe not MRI, but this was a scan of his yeah, skull. It like an MRI. And he put it on the on the ball. Yeah. Just let me get a look at the chat. 
Oh, it's still streaming. Yeah, yeah. This is all. This is all on the show still. Yeah. So oh. everyone can wave. <laughs> hi, Karina. Hello. Hi, Mojo. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can you guys hear me at all? Yeah, can hear you good. Yes. Good yeah. to see you here. Hey, nice. Yeah, I, I literally called the... the yeah, end I'm the only one muted. Like, oh my god, I've just bought that game. Amazing. Oh! Oh! It's a lot harder than golfing with friends, though. Right. Yes. Well, this uh, this game, for me, is a must-buy. Uh, the only caveat yeah. is if you have, like, an aversion to mini-golf, like, I don't know, your family got swept away in a mini-golf course or, you know, saying <laughs> saying that triggers traumatic memories. Like, you know, you've always got to put caveats because there's always those extreme circumstances. Mm -hmm. But as long as that hasn't happened, definitely get well, it. The problem is, now, all real-life mini-golf will now be uh, so underwhelming. Oh, like, honestly, yeah, this is better than any mini-golf I've done in the UK, yeah. By the way, yeah, if anyone needs a secret bull, awful. secret bull's just here. Ah, that's better. Secret bull's just here I if you need it. I didn't realise that the, um, the stick kind of goes down with you. Yeah, it does, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah, I was kind of holding it up like this really awkwardly. <laughs> oh. That's another reason I want another hand so I can clap. Yeah, I know. I feel like I'm just that, that is my why I was asking it. <laughs> I'd love to be able to just go around high five, but yeah, I'm just so yeah. used to holding two controllers at this mm. point as well. It feels weird. And by the way, anyone that's watching the live stream, do hit the like button if you haven't already. And also, I announced it just the other day on Twitter, um, but it's on my community tab on my channel, and it's not in the description of this video yet. Um, but hopefully, Karina or someone can get the, the mm. invite link. But um, my Discord server is now up and running, and it's called Empathy Arcade. Um, so be sure to join it. Uh, we'd love to see you there. And you're all gonna love who the moderator is, the uh, the bot. It's um, a penguin. <laughs> and if you ask the penguin, the ghost of a penguin. And if you ask the penguin bot it, uh, for its backstory, it mentions that it was hit on the head with a paddle. <laughs> and um, ah, uh, got it when it came to, it developed a new love for Discord moderation. <laughs> <laughs> right. My favourite thing to do is go big head mode and stare down at everyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't eat mess. I just, so it was only when Edward noticed, uh, mentioned it that I didn't realise you have the small stick in your hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if you actually reached all the way down here, could you actually hit the ball from that mode? I, well, I tried that the other day, not to hit the ball, but I was like crawling across my room to try and get to my friend, and it was just a health hazard. Oh, oh! The ball died! Oh! Is. oh. What? Hole in one! Oh. There's a ball the celebration the fly around the map. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard not to fly up in the air. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna do a replay now. One second. Yeah, do it, do it. Oh, and look at my character flying Just off. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I celebrate, because I can't believe it. No, no. Oh great. Oh good. Oh no. Okay, ideal. I'll just jump in the water. Oh no. Oh, wow, there's so much <laughs> chat I've not been keeping up with. Sorry, sorry. Oh, and also Ooh, for okay. those that don't know, on Wednesday, which will be the next live stream, is Miles Dyer Live. Got an incredible show planned. Um, Ash Millman from PlayStation Access is going to be joining me on the show, and we are going to be talking about the art of horror. So horror movies, horror games, horror PSVR. Um, really grateful for Ash um, offering to come on the show. Um, got so much planned for it. Um, it's all up on my YouTube channel, so if you go to my channel, click uh, the live tab, uh, and then you can click to be notified uh, exactly when we go live. But it's 9 p.m. UK time on Wednesday, which is uh, 4 p.m. Eastern and 1 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific. Oh, 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 yes. So there's a kid, Miles. Go. There's a kid, Miles. I watched a couple of horror films. One of them was called Driller Killer. And the other one was Manor 2. Have you heard of those no. films? They sound horrifying, though. Uh, yeah, they're pretty dated now, but 
back in the day, it was terrifying. I had awful nightmares. Ghostbusters 2 terrified me as a kid. That painting that came alive. Oh. <laughs> that kidnapped the baby. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, it's my turn now. Here, Driller it? Killer was actually banned back in the day. Was it really? It was a legal copy, yeah. You want the left one here? Yeah, I always miss it. Oh, here's the ball. <sighs> nice. Oh, ho. Okay. You really gotta get it here. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clean. Lovely. Anyone else getting tangled by their VR wires? I keep spinning around. I've got <laughs> mine trying, hanging I, off the I, ceiling. I, I, turn, I don't turn around to stay facing still. Ah, okay. okay. Although, I was playing pistol the other day, and I don't know how, I just like completely lost my bearings and just like punched a wall. <laughs> nice. That's the first time I've ever had like an accident. My yes. watch has just buzzed, telling me it's a bedtime reminder. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm, I'm up at 5am. Yeah, I have a 5am start as well for filming. For work, it's the last <laughs> week of doing it though, so um, two more days. Um, right. Let's see that. This is going to be a close game. Yes, I'm the good schools. <laughs> I love it. Everyone's heads in front of each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had to be that guy. Miles with the only hole in one so far, though. Not to brag. No, you can brag on my behalf. Quite happy for you to see that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jesus, your head is massive. <laughs> yeah. The pressure it's for those like putts, simple your putts. Your head gets massive, but your uh, your club is a lot of clubs the same. Is same. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you can get all the way, you can go into the clouds. Yes! <coughs> ah, this looks really good, doesn't it, this game? Yeah, it's awesome. Do I look like Superman on the Whee! stream? Fly on out, flying across the sky. <laughs> Ooh, in the clouds! <gasps> hey! It turns out the Earth is flat. We found the edge of it. <laughs> I think this is the massive ice wall they were talking about. Oh no, you can keep going beyond it. <laughs> I've gone beyond the ice wall. Now there's a space wall. Oh, now. Wow, is oh this what? God. Is that the edge of Earth? <laughs> it's like a dome. Wow. Right, I'm coming back. I'll be back in uh, 30 seconds. You're all good. There we go. Alright, this one. Got to be careful. Not very good at this one. No, I always mess this one up. Especially when I've got people putting their sticks in my face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way you like it. Oh! Very nice. This could be it. Oh my goodness. Oh! Oh! oh. Rob. Unbelievable. Yeah, so a lot of people use the grip setting that means you can like practice through the ball and then when you pull the grip then you hit it. Uh, okay. I don't have that on. How do you do that? It's in the settings. Oh, is it settings? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. No! <laughs> Plop. Feed the there fish. Goes. There it goes. Can you, can you, uh, I literally did that. Second. Is it using eye tracking? No, it's no. no they they, they said it's not using eye tracking, but it it looks convincing. Yes. Oh, this! <laughs> oh no! 
This is too good. Lots of people in the chat agree with me about Vigo in Ghostbusters 2 being terrifying. Oh, the bit where he just comes out and like I think slides all the boxes aside and the babies on the floor and uh, just as a kid absolutely terrified me. It's like <laughs> poor baby. Like doesn't the baby get abducted from like a New York skyscraper? Like it starts crawling out along the the edge and then this um sound like that ghost in the I'm sky the worst goal forever. kidnaps the baby and puts it in a <laughs> in a pram in the sky. It's yeah, that's right. It was like a ghost, uh, ghost woman. Yeah. I generally thought you were about to say it's like a Ghostbuster. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the secret balls here. Oh, yeah. So how do you unlock the secret clubs on the courses? It's on the hard modes of okay. the maps, and then there's clues nice. on it. And once you've found all the clues, okay. um. Basically, you find an item on your watch. You'll then have a clue of where the next one is, and once you've done them all, you then unlock the um, yeah the secret club. Got you. How do I get? Oh! You have to See, press the back time. on the on the <laughs> stick to create that teleportation beam. Ooh. Yeah, and that's how you <laughs> that's how you collect the um, cosmetics. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I'm just literally just figuring out how to move around. That's all right. It's been winding me up. But, uh, yeah, thank you for your assistance. Yay. Ah, oh, this is so much easier that I can teleport. <laughs> Almost. Oh, you got it lined up. Gummy Tarzan. You can join the current hole. Yeah, we've got to wait for Gummy Tarzan to come here. Just muted, yeah. Yeah, no, we oh, can hear no. you. We can hear you. Your eyeball is uh, <laughs> waiting here, <laughs> staring at me. I wonder if Edward yeah, says, "Oh, yeah, that's by the way, that's a photo of my eyeball." <laughs> Should have asked. <laughs> that was a replay. Yeah. Gummy's come along to just clean up. Oh, straight off. I like your ball. That's a good ball. We have space for one more player. Anyone on the live stream wants to join us? Although you're going to be. There's only four holes left. Nice. I'm happy with that. All is here. If anyone needs it, it's under this little table. Oh, yeah, nice one. Yeah, just here. How many secret balls? There's there? one for each I hole. I think I got that one. Oh, so Eighteen, okay. yeah. And then when you go to the big menu in in the sky, you um, when you press the buttons, go and check out the big menu. You can see the ticks, um, and that's where the lost ball is at the very bottom. <laughs> Where is everyone at the moment? Oh, there you are. I love it. Uh, it's so oh, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> oh. <It's> ridiculous. <laughs> see, I can't actually see the stick in my hand, so I can't hit it. Yeah, we can see your tiny. Hit it through here. Can we skim the ball across the wall oh. so it doesn't sink? <laughs> hit it through. You look like you're part you're of the rock formation now. Is my, is my hand on I the ground? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty. <laughs> ah! Ah! You hit my leg. <laughs> Jesus, this is terrifying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it looks, it looks like you are gonna. <laughs> oh, there's more than one of me. <laughs> oh no! Wait a minute. How do you guys get so big? It's when you go to the menu, so it's the top, is it the bottom button on your um, sense controller, the X button? It's where you 
Go, there you go. Now you're in the sky, looking at the menu. Oh, I didn't realise I've become really big when I do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a load of big heads. It's like Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> but more, more horrific. Oh, I'm loving this. <laughs> this doesn't get well. Okay, yeah, I'll Mount Rushmore. I'll down as well. They're Hold creating on. a <laughs> Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> a talking Mount Rushmore, amazing. <laughs> Isn't it in Team America? They come out the mouth. The, the mouth yeah, opens. So. Yeah. What's the name of the room? Ruthless Metal is asking. It is Miles Dyer Live 1. You can see it there. Miles Dyer Live 1. Alright, I'm going to do it better this time. You got this. There we go. Not bad, not bad. Somebody distracted me. <laughs> oh, you're going both. Backhand. Feed me a ball. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, um. Get it, yeah. <laughs> oh, you missed. <laughs> that was pure sabotage from you there. Concentrate. Take your time. Yes! Well done. <laughs> Uh, if anyone needs the ball, that it is. Yes, yeah, there. Right, need this. Very easy one. Right. Uh, I'm pretty sure you want to get it in this second. Yeah, the, the further one. Um, I don't know if it gets you a hole in one, but it gets you pretty close. Oh. I'm missing the next oh. one. Oh. oh! Is this a second hole in one? Oh. No, it's not. Oh. not oh. Nearly. Oh. It's annoying because I do want to get minus 18 uh, for one of the trophies. I'm really doing nine. And actually, I'm on. He could do it. Could be on track if I was. Um... So when the uh, guy said there's bodies everywhere, is he, is he talking about this sort of thing? Uh, where? You know when the guy he was interviewing, yeah. he said there's bodies. Where's the Where's the body? It, there's a the skeleton. skeleton. Here. Oh, the is skeleton. Yeah, I don't or... know if he means that. There's a ball here, by the way, on top nice. of these barrels. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that one. That's an eyeball, isn't it? It's a pretty cool one, huh? Yeah. These outlines are pretty nasty because if you hit them, they can get caught. Oh, that's oh, that's so close. Well, I haven't gotten this one.
You think you can get that one, Mars? I can try. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. Showing off now. Shaboo. Hey, he's running off to the next hole already. Yep. Planning it. Hey, Mars, I guess there's uh, no option like in a golf with friends where you can touch each other's balls. Uh, you know, you can't touch each other's balls on this, no. It's called walkabout mini golf, not golf with friends. Yeah, I'm fair enough. <laughs> but you can go in bushes together on this still. Okay, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. And you can appreciate each other's balls on this still. I appreciate all of your balls. Yeah, they're very nice balls. All slightly, you know, different in their own way. Yeah, that one's pretty bloodshot. <laughs> oh, it says that hole I need to go in. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. there's a big head up here. Such an amazing design map. How's everyone doing? Uh, doing chat, everyone doing good? Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Next week I'm going to have my new green screen set up. I've got this massive two meter one from Elgato which will hang on the ceiling behind me which means I don't have this ugly frame that sometimes uh, Very nice. exposes wall. Um, This is a uh, par four. Okay. Which hole are we on? Eight. Uh, yeah, so we've got one left after this. Very nice. Very, very nice. That's a good one. <coughs> that was actually quite quick to say there's one, two, three, yep. four, five, six, seven of us. Excellent. Good, really good, really good. Oh, that's bad, that, that's it. You're for in a straight line. You can get it. There's potential oh. for twos here. Oh, that's going oh, over. No. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, look at like Maybe spin the ball or something, but that ain't happened. Slice it, yeah. <laughs> just watch this, like, bounce it on your club and then, like, hit it over. Come yeah. on, Steve! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Blow it! 
<laughs> Everyone stay away from my balls. Oh, my head is clipping for the roof here. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, Super place. When I have both of you in like my peripheral vision, I'm getting like the twins from the <laughs> Matrix 2 vibes. <laughs> I think it's just the sunglasses. <laughs> mm, that's great. wide open and I just had my head between my legs at some point. <laughs> Hopefully no one's watching. Oh, I knew I'd miss no! it. Oh, I hit it. <laughs> well done. Well played. Nice, very nice. Calls clap. Where it goes and it curves around the edge. It's so nasty. Going back in the water. Fly away. <laughs> I can't handle the pressure. Take it's your anger out there. <laughs> oh no! Oh. Have you seen the ball over here? Yeah, it's right here if anyone needs it. In the sweet corner. Par. Right, come on. What's. Oh, okay, I can get par if I just. Don't panic. Okay, we'll take it, we'll take it. Just need to get a hole in one in the next one. Be brave and go for the plank. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Not again. Lots of positivity from the live chat cheering everyone on. It's great to see. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, they mu it must be like Who's watching an to win. <laughs> Top tier. Top tier. <laughs> Alright, this is all to play for. Who's going to be brave? Oh, no. Right. I do, I do normally take this route, but do I want to risk it? Where are we at at the moment? Come on. So at this is, this this is the last mile. Mile. You've got to risk it. Yeah. <laughs> I found the uh, secret ball was right here on this barrel. Yep. Right there. Now, keep in mind, people that join later, oh. they get oh. high scores. We don't count then. No. <laughs> Another One has failed to walk the plank. <sighs> oh. There's no way I'll get across there, but I'm going to have a crack. Yeah, you will. Believe. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. that one I still back on. Okay. Shows how it's done, Miles. I'm not going to mess it. P no pressure. PMA, <laughs> PMA positive minimum energy. I'm going to mess it. Oh, oh come off, on. Dude. He's just such a sweat. I'm <laughs> a sweat. <laughs> I never thought I'd be called that in this way. I hit it too hard. <laughs> Oh my can oh my game just freaked out as I hit that. That's what happened like, with me on the first hole. Rotated left. That's what happened with me on the first hole. Oh, I was so disorientating. <laughs> so the angle of your club makes a difference and all, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
I have done it, but yeah, it's a difficult one. I wonder what causes that weird... No. It's only ever so often that glitch. I have no idea what would cause it. On different games as well, yeah? I'll never have it on this oh, game. This, I've only ever noticed it on this game. The whole, like... Dead oh, nice! The, like, Jim Reed tracking. Jim, uh... We are literally on the last, on the hole, last hole. So, you can watch... <laughs> Has someone got the live stream running on in the background? Because I hear a little echo. Sound. It's not me. Oh, I'm unlucky. I haven't got the live stream, but I've got my TV on. I'll just turn the button. Oh, maybe that's what it is, yeah. Aye. Oh. Do not freak out, game. <coughs> there we go. Nice. Much better. Good. See, could have done that first time. Oh. Is the player that's watching, are they, um, are they actually able to move around? Or are they just watching from... Is Jim actually floating I around? I don't know. Uh, Let's go look. Jim. It's Jim at the start. Yeah, Jim's at the start. Hey, Jim. We were just on the last hole anyway, so, yeah. Next time, though. Light your hat. You look like one of the Chuckle Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> to me. Nice. Ooh. Does the Chuckle Brothers play to anyone outside of the UK? I know, I was going to say, it's a very... <laughs> and a certain generation as well, yeah. Oh. The expression of people's I should faces. go the other way. Again, man. Well, wow, so when I look at my wrist, it says uh, strokes two. Is that is that how many strokes I've got left? No, on the, no that's, the, that's how many that's you've the, done. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no way! I didn't realise you got that on your wrist. Yeah. Yeah, it's very handy. That's got the time. <laughs> that's the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part. yeah. It's the actual right doing? time and all. Hello. More VR games should have that. Oh, is it me? <laughs> Where I'm like, I'm like, what time is it? Oh, did I make it? Everyone, wave to Jim. Jim's here with us. Come to There's a ball over hat. there, look. Chuckle Brothers. Hey, Ooh, very nice. Yeah, whose ball's this? Ball here, look. Much style there. I didn't realise I made it. I don't know, I've got to see what happened there. <laughs> oh, wow. <right>. Oh. <laughs> Trick shot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a tricky hole. Oh, my PSVR 2 sense controller is low on battery. <laughs> Whoa. It's been overworked. I did three and a half hours on Pavlov. <laughs> right. I don't get to play as much VR as I'd like due to work and uh, weekends I've got my little boy. You need to get a second one then. So you can play together <laughs> yeah. and then get some for your colleagues so at work you can all well done nice game set nicely Ooh. done oh, that's really left, left. Thank, you, thank you thank you thank you Ta-da! Just the last one. Oh, nice! That was oh. great. Super close. 
It's, it's just stringing it out now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hit the straight. This is Phil Glimmer. Oh, yeah, was... look all these heads in the way. There we go. So, <laughs> can't see. I want to say a big shout out to everyone. Uh, we got Gummy Tarzan, Masuta Tombari, Time to Play, Jack, Brawling, Atmos. And, uh, yeah, so. I want to say a huge thank you, everyone, for uh, joining me thank for you. this. We will definitely be doing more of these in future. So, um, yeah, I will, uh, I will catch you online. Take care, guys. Cool. Thank you. Bye, Bye. stream. Bye. 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 <laughs> Great. So that is it, everybody. Uh, that is the end of today's Let's Play, or this week's Let's Play. Um, thank you so, so much for everyone who has stuck around or managed to check any of this. Um, I definitely need to rest my legs now. Um, I'm standing around uh, and I need to take out the bins, uh, <laughs> do all the sort of odd jobs before I get ready for bed. So, um, yeah, I just want to say a huge thank you uh, to Edward, um, the Mighty Coconut Crew. Incredible work with this game. It's an absolute joy. And um, a huge thank you to uh, everyone that joined the game. And as always, those in the live chat, if you're watching this on replay, huge love to you as well. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And also a huge, huge thank you to uh, the mods, uh, including um, Karina. Karina, who's done very, very good uh, with the questions. So with that gone, uh, it is time for me to say goodbye. So have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And Wednesday is a show that you don't want to miss out on. Subscribe, ring the bell to be notified, and hit the like button on your way out. Much love to you all. And uh, please post the link to the Discord one more time. Maybe we'll see you there. Bye-bye. Thank you.